Welcome to worship in this season of Lent. We begin our service in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our liturgy follows the Lutheran Service Builder, page 260 and following. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and repents of evil. Jesus said, If any man would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Christ was wounded for our transgressions. He was buried for our iniquities. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. We continue with the responsory. We have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. He was delivered up to death. He was delivered for the sins of the people. Blessed is the one whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. He was delivered up to death. He was delivered for the sins of the people. We have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. He was delivered up to death. He was delivered for the sins of the people. As we continue 
on our Lenten journey. We're reminded of the Ten Commandments that guide our lives, how we look to God and how we look to one another in love. The Ten Commandments. Feel free to repeat with me. You shall have no other gods. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Honor your father and mother. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or his manservant or maidservant, his ox or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. These are the Ten Commandments. We go to God in prayer for the Holy Christian Church. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the gift of divine peace and of pardon, with all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the Holy Christian Church, here and scattered throughout the world, and for the proclamation of the gospel and the calling of all to faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this nation, for our cities and communities, and for the common welfare of us all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For seasonable weather and for the fruitfulness of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who labor, for those whose work is difficult or dangerous, and for all who travel, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all those in need, for the hungry and homeless, for the widowed and orphaned, and for all those in prison, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the sick and dying, and for all those who care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who are upon our prayer lists, who are upon our hearts and mind, for those with whom we come in contact, those who are dealing with medical or financial or grief, relational, emotional, or other needs that they have, Lord, we lift them up to you as they are upon our prayer lists and our minds and hearts. You already know what is needed and we give them over to thy will. We pray this as we pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Finally, for these and for all our needs of body and soul, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Amen. Well, good morning and welcome to worship, everybody. We're so glad that you're here. Because we have some announcements. So first of all, Salem is a church that prays. And we all need prayer, especially during these difficult times. So if you do need prayer for a specific request, we invite you to reach out with an email to deacons at salemorange.com. That's deacons at salemorange.com. And our deacons will be able to reach out to you, connect with you, hear your prayers, and even pray with you over the phone. If you're here with us in person, we invite you to find me, find Zach, find Pastor, one of us here on the church staff that we can pray with you today before you go home. Uh, second of all, we're a church that serves together, and this is an essential part of our Christian community. Uh, there's plenty of opportunities for service, especially during these times. We still have opportunities to serve with Charity on Wheels. We also have volunteer opportunities with our tech ministry, especially during COVID, as we're worshiping so much online. With Setup, with Teardown, uh, we can teach you how to live stream. We can teach you how to mix. We can teach you how to do all these things. We also have volunteer opportunities with our community uh, happening with small groups, so if you'd like to be a part of a small group, be a part of a, a Christian community here at Salem, we still have those going on. 
Some are virtual. Some of them are meeting in person in people's houses, meeting outdoors. But we have small group opportunities, so you can head over to SalemLunch.com, get connected with the small group, get connected with people here at Salem, especially if you're a new family. We even have youth small groups, and I'm super excited about this endeavor that's been started. We have three or four youth small groups for high school students. So if you're a high school student or you have a high school student, um, we have a high school girls and a high school boys small group, and we're looking to start a third high school boys small group. So you can join one of those as well. Finally, we are a church that's in community together. And we're excited that we have people who are in community with us on Sunday morning here at Salem, whether we're outdoors or with inclement weather moving inside. We're excited that we have community watching at home. Whatever you're comfortable with um, at this juncture, we're excited about that. But ultimately, we're a church of community, so we invite you um, to to make those connections. Um, If you see somebody who's online with you, send a chat. Send your prayer requests in the chat. Um, We want to stay connected even during these difficult times so that when we emerge from these difficult circumstances, we're stronger than ever as a community of Christians here at Salem. And with that, if you'd like to find out anything else, we invite you to reach out to our church office, call us, um, email us. We'd love to connect with you. And with that, we invite you to continue with us in worship. Amen. And just to piggyback off of uh, some of those announcements that Adam was making, serving serving, serving. I don't know if you saw Pastor Frick back there modeling service by unpacking these chairs all by himself. We got, we got a pastor that does everything in this place. <laughs> he, was, he was mopping the floors earlier. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> no, but we do need your help. You know, it would be nice to have, uh, to not make pastor actually put the chairs out. That would be nice. Um, so like if you, if you feel moved, please, please look into serving. We could use your help. Um, and now we're going to go ahead and collect our gifts and our offerings, and we're going to go also into a time of confession. You can make an offering through our website at SalemOrange.com. Under resources on the top right, there's a page for online giving. Um, I would encourage you all also, if you haven't already, to sign up to automate your tithes. The automated system really makes it easy to stay obedient to God. I've said that before, and I'll continue to say it again. Through these difficult times, though, it is important to remember that. Um, Thank you again. Thank you again so much for your generosity to Salem. We would not be able to exist without your tithes and your offerings. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And now let us get our hearts ready to go to God in prayer and repentance. Um, Every week as we worship together, we have this opportunity to admit to ourselves, to admit to ourselves, to each other, and to God that we don't don't always live as we're called. Um, But new every morning is God's great love for us. Um, Let us remember that God is merciful and just and eager He's eager to offer his grace. With these, with these truths in mind, let us pray. Please bow your heads. Let's, let's pray together. Make my words your own. Lord God, loving Father, all the fancy words in the world expressed in eloquent ways, decorated with emotion and spoken with conviction, cannot compete with a heartfelt, I am sorry. When we just can't find the right words, I am sorry has to do. Lord, these are times when we are all too aware of our limitations. Let us be more conscious of our sin and the distance it creates between us. Sometimes I'm sorry is all the heart can bear to say aloud. It is only you who can read and understand the language of our innermost thoughts. Only you who can translate my sorry into the prayer we would have prayed if we had the words within us. Lord, please forgive each of us for the sins we are silently confessing to you now and through this next song. Please help us to remember the great price your son Jesus paid for them. We pray all of this in his name. Amen. As we sing this next song, let us take some time for personal examination, reflection. Let us all reflect on the great price our Lord paid for our sin. As I remember, I've been walking through the wilderness, praying to the Father and waiting for my time. 
I've come here with a mission and soon I'll give my life for this world. I'm praying in the garden and I'm looking for a miracle. I find the journey hard, but it's the reason I was born. And can this cup be passed on? Lord, I pray you will be done in this world. So I carry my cross and I carry the shame to the end of the road through the trouble and the pain. And I'll do it for love, no, it won't be in vain. Yes, I'll carry my cross, and I'll carry the shame. I feel like I'm alone here, and I'm treated like a criminal. Time has come for me now, even though I've done no wrong. Father, please forgive them. They know not what they've done in this world. So I carry my cross and I carry the shame to the end of the road through the trouble and the pain. Yes, I do it for love. No, it won't be in vain. Yes, I carry my cross and I carry the shame. Yes, yes, I, I carry, carry my cross, cross and I'll carry the shame. Yes, yes I, I carry my cross and I'll carry the shame. We'll see how this goes. Otherwise, we'll have a drum roll every once in a while. Uh, but God comes and he says... Jesus Christ now heals you. And those are the words that we receive when we say, God, I'm sorry, and God says, I've already forgiven you. I've forgiven you on the cross. I forgive you of your sins. And as a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, your sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you and be with you as you live a life of living, not one of sin and death. For Christ heals you and forgives you. Amen? Amen. We just sang two songs ago about open up your doors and let the mighty power in. And the reason why we're inside today is because the Santa Ana winds are outside today. And so thank you all for joining us, whether you're here in person, whether you're watching from at home or uh, on the internet or on your tablet, um, online. It definitely, uh, I just saw the, the, the um, weather report and it says uh, 29 miles an hour and then 26 miles an hour with gusts of 50 to 60. So God blew us in as we opened up the door. So good to have you here today. Well, God's amazing grace be upon you, my brothers and sisters, as we uh, take a look at God's word to us today. So if you've got your Bibles with you, I invite you to open up to Acts chapter 9, verse 32 through 43. And may God's grace be abundant as we go through and hear and receive his words. Acts 9, 32 through 43. Now this month we've been doing a, a series online uh, with our Salem News about love your community. It's February. It's the love month. And we've been seeing responses back about how people are loving their family, their neighborhoods, uh, their educators, their first responders, civil servants, those who are uh, all around us, our our postal carrier workers and grocery store and just across the board how we're loving our community. And we've been going through the book of Acts and seeing how God loves us and how we are to love one another. And today we take a look as we close out February, uh, the last day of February. Where did February go? And then we get to, um, uh, we, we close out our love month. 
And as we pivoted from outdoors to indoors, uh, and then next week, without wind, we'll be outdoors again. You want me to put on a different mic? We're going to pivot again. So have a commercial break just for a moment. So today we're taking a look at ending up in February and how God has a heart and we're going to take a look today how God has a heart for humans, for helping, and for heaven. But I want to throw out a question for you first. Think about this. What does a battery, a paper clip, and a small nail all have in common? A battery, a little battery that you use in your car fobs, a paper clip, and a nail. What do those all have in common? So, <laughs> MacGyver. MacGyver can use them to make an atomic bomb, yes. Uh, they are roughly have the same amount of metal, or specifically steel in them. A two-penny nail, a little battery, and a paper clip approximately have about 25 milliliters so they all have roughly the same amount of steel in them. I'd never known that. All those different things have about the same amount, give or take, of depending on the size of the battery and the size of the paper clip and a small little one-inch nail or a brad if uh, you're in construction, or it could be a two-penny nail. They all have roughly about the same amount of metal. And as we walk through, or steel, as we walk through today, we're going to take a look at how God has a heart for us. And this week, when you're using a battery, or a paper clip, or a nail, you can be thinking about how God has a heart for you. So let's jump into it. Verse 32. Uh, is Luke, we just switch, and Luke, who's the writer of Acts, uh, God's a writer, but Luke penned it, uh, jumps from Saul to Peter. All of a sudden, in verse 32, we have, as Peter traveled about the country, he went to visit the Lord's people who lived in Lydda. Lydda is a town in uh, about, oh, 48 kilometers or 30 miles northwest of Jerusalem. Nowadays, it's known as Lod or Lud, but Lydda was the biblical right. name. Back Lord's people who lived in Lydda. Now, why would Peter even go to Lydda? Jerusalem, we had just had Pentecost. We had 5,000, over 5,000 men who had, been, uh, who had received Christ and been baptized. So if you extrapolate that, 25, 30,000 new believers in Jerusalem. That's like a couple mega churches thrown together uh, in Jerusalem. Why would Peter need to go to Lydda? Well, because sometimes God calls us out of our comfort zone into new areas and says, I need you to go. I need you to go because people need to turn to the Lord. And so he goes to Lydda. Like I said, about 48 kilometers or 30 miles away from Jerusalem. And now, to give us an idea, that would be approximately a little bit longer to go to Los Angeles proper, but getting into L.A., why would anyone want to go to L.A.? Why? Well, even L.A. and the people surrounding it need Jesus. Just like there might be somebody in L.A. saying, why would I come to Orange Park Acres? Well, even OPA, East Orange, East Orange County, needs Jesus. Verse 33, he found a man named Aeneas who was paralyzed and had been bedridden for eight years. I just paused on that because we see in the Bible over and over how somebody goes through very difficult times for a lengthy period of time. We've been in COVID for what, 11 and a half months? Can you imagine being paralyzed by COVID for eight years? being in lockdown, being paralyzed where you couldn't do anything. And I know that there are people who are going through serious medical uh, issues or substance issues or financial issues that they say, I just can't get through this. But I want you to know, God has a heart for humans. How do we know this? Because in verse 34, Aeneas, Peter said to him, Jesus Christ heals you. Not I, Peter, 
not I the apostle, Jesus Christ heals you. Get up and roll up your mat. Immediately Aeneas got up, all those who lived in Lydda and Sharon saw him and turned to the Lord. Jesus Christ heals you. It's not something that we do. It's not something that we do on our own part that we accomplish enough or jump through enough hurdles. Jesus Christ always is the one who is giving us grace and love and forgiveness. In our marriages, in our homes, in our parent-child relationships, rather than always saying, I'm going to do it, what would happen if we came from the standpoint of Jesus Christ is going to come in. I want to open up the doors and let the glory of God come into my home, into my relationships. All those who lived in Lydda and Sharon saw him and turned to the Lord. What's the reason for the gospel message? What's the reason for the book of Acts? What's the reason for us gathering together in church? It's so that we can receive what God has done. So that people can turn to the Lord through our actions, through our words, through our behavior, through our message of God's goodness and grace. Turn to the Lord. I think about this. The first uh, item that if you're in walking around this week, think of a battery. Batteries get discharged and they go dormant. They go dead. And yet God comes in and he says, I'm going to fill you with my life, my power, my presence, my energy, my purpose. God is constantly filling our batteries. Why? Because God has a heart for humans. God has a heart for you. Verse 36, in Joppa, there was a disciple named Tabitha. In Greek, her name was Dorcas. I'm just going to stop there. Joppa is about, oh, 27 kilometers, for those who like kilometers, or about 16 miles away from Lydda. So to give you a perspective, it would be like us going from here down to just about Laguna Beach. Kind of through that from the, from the hills down to the coastal plain of walking. And so over about 16 miles away, from here down to about Laguna Beach in Joppa, there was a disciple. Now a disciple, this is the first, and I think the only time that a female is named as a disciple. There are others who were God-fearing and other women who are mentioned wonderfully in the Bible. But Luke takes this opportunity to say, here's a disciple. Now, a disciple is just a holy one, a one who is a follower, or in today's vernacular or in Old English, we would say a saint. And so here was Tabitha, Dorcas, a holy one, a disciple, a follower, just like all of you. You are all a follower of Christ. In Hebrew, her name was Tabitha. In Greek, her name was Dorcas. It's a good thing her name wasn't Karen because all the millennials would just be laughing right now. Sorry, side note. She was always doing good and helping the poor. And about that time, she became sick and she died. And her body was washed and placed in an upstairs room. Now, back in Jewish times, biblical times, you were put in the ground almost immediately. It was expected that you were buried within a day of your death. And three days was really pushing it if somebody wasn't in the ground. And so Lydda was near Joppa. And so when the disciples heard that Peter was in Lydda, they sent two men to him and urged him, please, Come at once. Now, remember, I said Lydda and Joppa were about 16 miles apart, about from here down to Laguna Beach. Laguna Beach is 22 miles if you go down the toll roads, but as a crow flies, that gives you kind of an idea. Now, to put it in a different perspective, how many of you have ever been up to Robber's Roost or the flag up on the top? 
I know a number of you have. In fact, I ran into Todd Von Sprecken the other day as I was hiking around, and he says, yeah, I just went up to the flag. And it's like, oh, Todd, it's dark. I'm not going to get up there tonight, but I got up there. And as I was walking up, I realized as I had my little step meter on, and as the little uh, map says, it's about three miles from here, from where we are right now. So what I'm talking about is at the top of Santiago Oaks Park and beyond, up in Anaheim Hills, three miles away. And so imagine going up three miles, and then coming back three miles, and then going up three miles, and then coming back three miles, and then going up three miles again. That's about how far it was, and that kind of terrain. And so imagine that. We jump in our car, and we can get someplace like that in a car. But walking takes a little bit longer. And they came, and they said, please, come at once. And Peter went with him, and when he arrived, he was taken upstairs to the room, and all the widows stood around him, crying and showing him the robes and other clothing that Dorcas had made while she was still with them. I want you to know right here, why was Peter there? Why was Peter with Dorcas? Because God has a heart for helping. God has a heart for helping people, especially when they are hurting. Not only was Dorcas hurting, well, she was dead, but the women who she had cared for, who she had served and loved on, just like our Charity on Wheels, just like our missions, just like our Makeover Weekends, just like Salem on a regular basis, when somebody dies, there's grief and there's hurt. And God is there to help, especially the hurting. Think about a paperclip. That's the second analogy today. A paperclip is just a piece of steel. And yet, through a process, it is bent to be used as a purpose. Bent to be able to hold things together. Bent to be able to keep things united. I know some people use them for earwax removers, but the primary purpose is to hold things together, to serve of holding in unity something together. A paperclip helps. Paperclips help because they're bent for that purpose. A straight piece of metal, a straight piece of wire is bent for a purpose. Each one of us is bent for a purpose by God. Some of us can sing. Some of us can play instruments and music. Some of us can sew and quilt like Dorcas. Some of us can serve with our hands in construction like Makeover Weekends. Some of us can help and serve by praying for one another. Some of us can help and serve by just being there. Some of us can help and serve by sharing our gifts. Some of us can help and serve and be paperclips for God's kingdom just by being bent for his purpose. How is God bending you? How is God taking a strong piece of your iron will and bending you to help others. And unfortunately, here on earth, I think sometimes hurt bends us. I think the byproduct of being hurt is we're more malleable, we're more understanding, and we're more willing to be bent for God's purpose. Brothers and sisters, we're all batteries and we're all paper clips. How is God bending you for his service? Verse 40, Peter sent them all out of the room. Then he got down on his knees and prayed. What do you think he was praying? You think he was going through a long litany of prayers? You think he was going through short prayers? Luke doesn't tell us. He could have been praying the Lord's Prayer, which God gave to us. But I'm sure he was focused on, Lord, this is your will And thy will be done. Turning towards the dead woman, he said, Tabitha, get up. Tabitha, by the way, means gazelle. In the Hebrew language, it means gazelle. And Jesus used the word talitha 
when he had the centurion's daughter, and he went to her and he said, Talitha, get up. And here Peter copies the Lord, emulates the Lord, and says, Tabitha. One little letter change from Talitha to Tabitha, but still God says, get up. And he says that to each of us too. Little girl, little boy, get up and follow me. Open your eyes. And that's exactly what Tabitha did. She opened her eyes and seeing Peter, she sat up. She doesn't say anything. She just sat, sits up. And the focus isn't on Tabitha. The focus isn't on Peter. The focus is on what God does for us. Peter took her by the hand and helped her to her feet. Then he called for the believers, especially the widows, and presented her to them alive. This became known all over Joppa. And here's the core of the story. And many people believed in the Lord. Why does Peter go from Jerusalem, from a megachurch, to a little village? Because people need to believe in the Lord. Why does Peter say, Jesus Christ heals you to Aeneas? Because people need to believe in the Lord. Why does Peter be used as an instrument for God and allow God to raise Tabitha, little gazelle? Because people need to turn to the Lord and believe in God. Peter stayed in Joppa for some time with a tanner named Simon. Now, Simon, a tanner in Jewish time, for those, why is that put in the story? Because Peter, as a kosher Jewish man, would not be staying with a man who was around dead, unclean animals. A leather worker, a person who worked with dead animals on a regular basis, that wasn't kosher. And yet God was putting him into an uncomfortable position so that he could spread the word. And so that Peter could be aware that there's something beyond just my rites and rituals, my own opinions and viewpoints. And as we find out next week in chapter 10, Peter has a transformative revelation and vision. God says the same thing to us. Sometimes we're put into situations with unclean people, and yet we're called to be there so that they may receive the Lord as a battery, as a paperclip, or the third and final one, as a nail. Because God has a heart for helping people get to heaven. God has a heart for heaven. And that's where the nail comes in because Christ, as we know, extended his arms and nails were placed into his arms, his hands and his feet, so that he would sacrifice and give his life to cover us for our sins and give us forgiveness and hope for a future. God has a heart for heaven. Lydda, Joppa, two very unknown places, and yet the historical significance, both of them were trade routes. Both of them were interchanges. Both of them had a lot of commerce and traffic from Babylon to Egypt. And so to get out of Jerusalem, out of the church, and into the community, and into the city is where God called Peter and where God calls us into commerce, into business, into the lives of, of our co-workers around us. Why? So that many people can believe in the Lord. God has a heart for humans. God has a heart for you. He constantly fills our battery fills us with life and energy. God has a heart for helping those who are hurting to hold together like a paper clip. And God has a heart for heaven. Hope for you both now and in the future to come because of everything that God has done for you.
God bless you, brothers and sisters, as we close out February, as we close out, love our community, love your community, but know that God is the one who's going ahead, going ahead for you, going ahead for helping those who are hurting, and going ahead because heaven waits for all. God bless you and be with you as God sends you out into the city beyond. Amen? Amen. I invite us to join together as the band is coming up, join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us depart with joy. We go to God in prayer. I thank you, my heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless and preserve you always and forever. Amen. Have a blessed Sunday and a wonderful week. God's blessings.